that is my favorite guitar chord. Because you can do stuff like this. stories one is pretty embarrassing and the other one is um just an amazing fulfillment or like uh benefit of you guys watching these videos so okay here's the embarrassing story i was 19 or so i was working at the guitar shop by myself and this old guy came in one day it was a pretty slow afternoon a guy came in he's wearing overalls uh and these big round glasses and so i didn't really recognize him but uh, he came in the shop and he said, hey, do you have any old Martins, anything slope shoulder, 12 fret? You know, if you have a slot headstock, that'd be, I w I'm, I'd, I'm always looking for something like that. And I was like, okay, absolutely. And so we went over and I don't even remember what guitar it was, probably a D18, but I still don't remember. I've racked my brain through the years trying to remember this story because this is just so long before I knew or cared about um, the details of these things. So anyway... I found this guitar, I pulled it out of the case, and I sat down and I played with this guy, and immediately I realized this is the best guitar player I've ever heard. Like, this is one of the absolute best. And he just had an amazing style of playing. And so I sat down and he kind of invited me, like knee to knee, walk over and he showed me how to play some stuff. And for 45 minutes or so, we hung out, we played guitar. And, uh, and then he said, well, thanks for having me. I'm gonna hit the road. And uh, he left and didn't see him again. Maybe 20 minutes after he left, Warren, who owned the shop, uh, ran into the shop. He's like, hey, um, just so you know, Norman Blake is coming today. Um, so we got to clean up the shop and get everything ready. Go ahead and restring that guitar. And he had me restring uh, the 12th fret that Norman, who I just found out that was Norman Blake, had played. That's when it hit me that uh, I had no idea who I was sitting down knee to knee with for an hour playing guitar and him teaching me. But it was Norman Blake. And so since then, it has just been a profound, I mean, it's what a crazy experience. And I've been embarrassed about that because I mean, there is always a thing to make you feel like you missed out or you don't know enough about music. So for me, uh, embarrassment is a, is a common feeling that I have in the guitar world. And um, yeah, so ever since then, I have paid attention to Norman Blake's music, both new and old. And uh, I've always loved, I've been drawn to similar styles of guitars that he loves and plays. Now we both play them very differently, but we love them the same. And so over the years I've played, each time I've had the opportunity to play something connected Norm, to Norman Blake, I've always tried to, I've always been really eager um, to get my hands on the same guitars. Now, listen, I'm nowhere in the same universe as him as far as guitar players.
story number two is that I first found out about Santa Cruz guitars when my friend Cliff uh, got a pre-war OM in the mid-2000s, and we were in the same kind of circle in, uh, in a ministry called Young Life. And so he would play, and he had the coolest guitar that I'd ever seen. It had the most beautiful volute on the back of the headstock. It was uh, um, had these really beautiful, like, aged nickel Waverly tuners. And there was something about that bridge that was just so, like, organic looking. So ever since then, I have been on the search for a uh, Santa Cruz of my own. And that's when this one that intersects in these two stories came into my world. And so this is a Santa Cruz. This is a 12 fret round shouldered Sitka spruce top, uh, Honduran mahogany back and sides, just absolute finger style guitar monster. And this one has an incredible story and involves many friends along the way. And I'll, I'll do this story as quickly as I can. Number one, this guitar was developed for Norman himself for him to go on tour with Tony Rice. Now this is not, I don't think this is a guitar that he ever actually played himself. It's an incredibly rare one. So that's where I don't know what to, to price it if I would ever sell it. I'm not planning on selling this guitar. Uh, this guitar is just absolutely ticks so many of the boxes for me with a Santa Cruz. Number one, I love that headstock and this beautiful logo. And I love those square slots. It's just a beautiful kind of homage to how these guitars would have been made if they were made by Martin in the 30s. Just those square uh, slots, just cool. The other thing that I absolutely love about this guitar is that bridge. There's a thing about boutique guitars is Boutique guitars do not miss the details. Um, they are putting out guitars meticulously. Um, they know that every single one can make or break their reputation. They can't have any stinkers get out. And I'm not saying that other brands are okay with that, but I think that there are little details. So the details that you need to catch if you're looking, if you're thinking about boutique guitars, number one, always look at the nut and look at the saddle. The nut on this guitar is just absolutely just perfect. I mean, the way that they fit this is just absolutely world-class. The other one is the bridge on these. I've always loved the Santa Cruz bridge. Boucher is the only brand that I've ever found that's even kind of close to this. On the bridge, it feels like, it feels like they just took the bark off of this beautifully, perfectly shaped piece of wood. Like it looks like it occurred in nature and it's just rounded and smooth and beautiful and a little shiny. How did I get this guitar? This guitar came to me from my friend Terry. Now Terry is another quick story in this. Um, Terry has owned this guitar since the 90s, I believe. Uh, Terry became a fast friend. He became a YouTube patron first. Uh, and then we just kind of connected. We started talking about Norman Blake. He lives in Knoxville, Tennessee, and he invited me. He's like, hey, next time you're coming through on your way to Nashville. And so a year and a half ago, I was driving through and it was a snowy morning. And uh, I ended up just, it worked out in my schedule that I could stop and see him for a bit. And so I stopped and saw, uh, and saw Terry and I got to play all of his guitars. And this was one of the guitars that was in his collection. And he and I share a deep love for 12 fret guitars, for finger style, for wider nuts, for slot headstocks, uh, and for some of the same music as well. And so, this one was just a quick guitar that I definitely wanted to own if I had the opportunity. And at the time he was not selling, he was not interested in selling, it was his pride and joy. As time and friendship developed, he realized a couple months ago that he wanted me to own this guitar. And so that has been the deepest honor, one of my, one of my deepest honors of the last couple of years is that I now get to own this guitar. Now it is not, okay. You always get in trouble when you talk critically about things, particularly that are gifts. It goes against so much of my Southern upbringing to say anything negative about this, but I want to be clear, this guitar is not perfect. It has been used, it has been played, and it has a few battle scars. 
Um, overall, I mean, the, the overall condition is really, really good. I would put it in a very good category, but there's definitely some pig scratches. There's definitely a couple little things. I mean, you ha it has been used. There's minimal fret wear. The one thing that we do need to talk about is there is a crack on the top of the guitar in the center seam. Now, this one I know broke uh, Terry's heart. Terry lived outside of DC or maybe Baltimore, and this guitar was being repaired in Baltimore uh, when there was a blizzard, and the blizzard came in, uh, knocked out power, it was in the repair shop, and it just got so cold over a couple days of having no electricity that this guitar cracked down the center seam. Now, they were able to fix it. You can't really feel it. I mean, you can barely, barely feel it um, when you're coming through, but it is, it just has a tiny little ding, but other than that, there's really nothing wrong with this guitar. So uh, this guitar is going to be with me. It's an incredible gift um, to me. Now it wasn't a gift because there was still some horse trading and Terry got a guitar and we're working stuff out. But owning this guitar only happens because you guys watch these videos, because you subscribe to the channel, because you become channel members and patrons. Literally this one only happens because, uh, because of really generous patrons that have become friends. So until the world is filled with music and friendship, we got a lot of work to do. So thanks for being a guitar hunter. Make sure you like this video and subscribe. And uh, man, I don't take it lightly that you watch these videos. It means so much to me. Thank you and I'll see you later. Oh. Do you see that? <laughs>